Hello guys. Today in this video we will look at implementing Grover's algorithm. So what is Grover's algorithm trying to address? It is trying to address unstructured search. So unstructured search is searching an unsorted array for a particular item. Classically, the number of elements in that array is n. It is expected that we will take at least n rounds or n by 2 rounds to find that element. That's the time complexity. So the time complexity is of order of n. So what Grover's algorithm is trying to do is if we are trying to do this in a quantum computer with a quantum implementation, can we make the time complexity better? And Grover's algorithm says that time complexity comes down to order of root n. Right? So that is what we are going to see today. So formally, the problem that we are going to solve is uh, having to find x, where x is an element from 0 to n, and we need to find f of x equal to 1. So, I mean, the real problem, the array can have any number of elements, any number of uh, numbers, any type of numbers, and we are looking for a particular number. But the same problem can be reduced to a, a simpler version where every element in the array is 0 except 1. Right? The hardest case is when exactly 1 is, uh, one of the element is not 0 and 1. Right? So we are trying to find that 1. So f of x should return 1. Right? So that is the problem that we are trying to, uh, we have in hand. So there is an array and there is a function f of x which will look into this array. And if I give an element number, like say, what is in 0th location, f of 0, so look, go look at f of 0, it will say, oh, 0. f of 1, it will go and say, oh, it is 0. f of 2, it will go and say, it is 0. f of 4, if I give 4, it will say, f of 4 is 1. So when I get f of 4 equal to 1, I know 4th location is where we have the gold. So we are trying to find the gold. So this is the quantum circuit for Grover's algorithm. So I'm not going to explain uh, what Grover's algorithm is, uh, how this Grover's algorithm actually works. If you need me to do that, uh, I will do another video on that. Please uh, put your comments on the comment section. I will do that. But technically, you know, imagine there is a lot of magic and at the end of it, we can implement Grover's algorithm. And uh, this is how the Grover's algorithm will look. It has a series of gates. So it starts with three main components. It has a Hadamard gate, an f of x or the oracle, and uh, inversion about bean function. So the three different gates. I will go and specifically explain the implementation of each of them. But what it looks like is like this. You have an input, which is all zeros. Uh, n inputs, so n bit, n zeros. And it will apply to Hadamard gate. What this does is, uh, once this Hadamard gate is applied to all the zeros, at this point, the magic of quantum mechanics happen. The value of all the bits here is a superposition state, which means the value of bits there represent all the possible numbers. So it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, uh, 0 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, etc, etc. It is not just one particular input. So all the different inputs are given at the same time to the quantum circuit. So that is what Hadamard gate does. Okay, I'm deviating from the point. So you have an Hadamard gate, then you have your f. Your f is basically the f of x function, oracle. So uh, as I said earlier, if you give four here, it will give a one as output. Everything else, it will be a zero. Right, so that is the your f f. So you, this u of f is a black box for you. And you need to find what is the secret within the UFF. And then again, another Hadamard gate. And then there is a mean function, mean inversion. right? We'll see what that is, how that function looks like, how to implement that. And then another Hadamard. And this part, which I have put a box, this will be repeated root n times. So that is why this is one step. After this one step, I will do the same step root n times. And after root n times, I will just measure the value of the output bits. So the all the input bits, I will look what the values are. And the claim is that with a very high probability, I can recover the number where uh, the gold is located. Okay. So now let us look at how to implement each of these components. 
So this is how uh, implementing the Oracle looks like. So Oracle UFF will look something like this. It have uh, a number of bits which take the input X, a bit which give the answer f of x so it's either 0 or 1 based on what input comes here there will be some extra 0 bits here uh, this will help to, cre to create the circuit uff you know every program or every uh, algorithm or pseudocode at the end get converted into a circuit in classical computer just like that it will end up converted into a quantum circuit here and that is one output here then similar to all the zeros here, there will be a lot of zeros here and all the x bits that come here will also be outputted here as x. So if you give 0, 0, 0, 0 here, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, you will give f of 0, 0, 0, 0 and a lot of zeros. That is what u of f looks like. We will see in a minute how this is implemented. So let us see how we can implement the oracle. Start with 1 bit. So 1 bit basically means there are only two elements in the array because a bit can either be 0 or 1, right? So f of 0 can be 1 or f of 1 can be 1. For the time being, let us take f of 0 equal to 1. So the, the gold mine is at the location 0, right? So we have a initial input of q0 and then we have another qubit q1, right? Let us assume that this is where the answer is. And let us assume that the answer, answer is initially 1. So we'll give zero here and this X gate convert the answer to one. So this is one. So right now what we are assuming is that the answer is one and based on this qubit, we'll change the answer, right? So if this qubit is zero, then this part, you know, I apply an X over here and X becomes one. So this is the, you know, the, how the function look like. I know that F of zero is where the gold is. So if it is, uh, uh, so I put the X gate, so if it is zero, this becomes one here, okay? And when this is one, this should not change. When this is zero, this should change to zero. So basically I need to do an AND of Q0 and Q1 to get the answer, right? So it AND Q0 and Q1 and store the result in Q2, okay? So for that, we use this quantum gate called C swap, which does something very similar to AND gate. So it takes Q0 and Q1 AND it and the result of Q0 and Q1 will be and Q2. Okay. So, do you find any problem with this circuit? It looks pretty okay. It has one input bit Q0 and according to that Q0, it finds the answer in the output bit Q2. Everything looks fine correct but there is one caveat q0 and q1 their states initial state is completely changed at the output bits because of these circuits inside because of these gates in the circuits inside which act upon q0 and q1 the value of q0 and q1 over here is not the same as it is here in the input we need to find a way to reset this there's a very easy way to do this. Most all, almost all quantum gates are reversible. For instance, a NOT gate is the reverse of itself. So if you apply a NOT gate, another NOT gate will nullify the effect. The same with C swap, it is its own inverse. So you apply it twice, it nullifies the state. So we what we do is we start applying all these gates in the same order as we have uh, first applied to that. So what happens when we do this is that Q0, Q1 and Q2 get reset. Now there is another issue. If Q0, Q1 and Q2 get reset, we don't have the information in Q2 because Q2, whatever the information that we have is the same as before the circuit. Right. So a beautiful trick for that is after we get the result in Q2, we use that and transfer that information to Q3 using a controlled X to CX gate. So you know, now we have the answer at Q3 and all these three uh, qubits will be reset to the initial value. So now that is uh, 
the one bit implementation for f of 0 equal to 1. What if f of 1 is equal to 1? What if our oracle uh, stores the goal in uh, the location 1? If that is the case, the implementation is almost exactly the same. The only difference is that the first the bit q0, we don't put uh, the x gate. We flip the input bit. That's the only difference. The implementation is everything else is similar. So now uh, we have uh, a solution for one bit. Now let us see how we solve for two bits. Getting Im or implementing the oracle or f of x for two bits is very similar to implementing to uh, implementing a single bit oracle. So let us assume in our two bit implementation the goal is located at 0, 0. As you have seen in the previous slide, if you can implement 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 is all, all similar. We just have to flip the particular bit with 1. So what do we need to do? We need to add more qubits to calculate the output. Exactly one more qubit to calculate the output. Previously, we had q0, q1. Now we have q0, q1, q2, one extra bit for input. Then we had two bits for answer in one bit implementation. Over here, we have three bits to calculate the answer. So we add one extra qubit for finding the answer. How are we going to do this? If you look carefully, this part is exactly same as a single bit. It's a Q0 is C swapped or added with Q2, the beginning of the answer bit. And then the result is stored in Q3. This is exactly the same as what we have seen in the previous slide. After that, what happens is we repeat the same thing, same step with Q1 and the new answer qubit Q4. So we have a Q1 now and then the new answer bit is Q4. So we repeat the same thing that we did for one bit for the second bit. Q1 does a C swap or an AND with Q3 and store the value in Q4. Now, once we have Q4, that will be stored in Q5 and everything is reversed using uh, the inverse gates. Right? So that is 2-bit implementation. And how can we do the n-bit implementation? You repeat the same step by adding one extra qubit for answer and just adding one more uh, C, uh, C swap or AND with the new qubit and the previous answer. That's all you need to do. Now let us see how the mean inversion is implemented. So the mean inversion function is looks very similar to the oracle. So let us let me say what this uh, what is the input to this function and what is the output it is expected. Very similar to uh, the oracle, you have an x here, an n bit number, and an f of x, right? It's not f of x. It is. It should be the mean inver inversion value. The result that we are expecting here is if the input is 0, 0, 0, if all the input is 0, then this becomes 0. Else it returns 1. So when you think about it, it is like the gold is stored in 0, but the result will be just the opposite. Like if it is uh, uh, or the oracle, if it, the result is 0, 0, 0, 0, it will be 1, everything else will be 0. Right? So it's very similar to oracle, just that the output is flipped. Right? So the implementation therefore is very easy for this one. This is the implementation for 2 bits. You may not understand the significance now, but if I compare it side by side with the oracle, you can see that it is exactly the same. The oracle for 0, 0, f equal to 0, uh, u of f of 0, 0, uh, I mean, the gold is hidden in 0, 0 for that oracle. And this one for the mean, uh, mean inversion is same, except for the output bit is flipped. So its output here is 0, output here will be 1. The output here is 1, the output here is equal to 0. That's the only difference 
for this implementation. Now let us see how to implement Hadamard. Hadamard is a basic gate in quantum computing. So what it does is it takes a zero bit and convert it into a superposition state where the bit is both zero and one at the same time. Same with you know if it gets one, it convert one into a superposition state where it is both zero and one at the same time, right? So we put Hadamard apply Hadamard gates to all the input bits. That is what the Hadamard gate is. So with that, we have all three components that we need to put all these things together, right? So the assumption is that we have the the Oracle UFF as a black box and we find the gold in that black box in order of root and steps right we don't know what is inside this of course when we make it we know it but once we make the uff we'll give it to someone to find that right so uh, so let us create a uff with key 1101 okay so it is a 4 bit number which means there are maximum of 16 elements in that array uh, root of 16 is 4 let us see if we repeat this for 4 times we can do the magic and find 1101 with a very high probability. So this is how the implementation of the Oracle looks like for 1101. This is very similar to the two bit Oracle implementation that we have seen, it's just bigger in size. And this is how the full uh, circuit looks like. Not the full circuit, this is just one iteration of the circuit. So here are the four bits Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. You have the Hadamard gates applied, right? So this is the first barrier, the first part. And then this box here is the UFF, right? And after UFF, you have Hadamard gate. So there is a Hadamard gate here in this small box. The input bit is applied to the Hadamard gate. And after the Hadamard gate, what we have is is the mean inversion. So this part here from this box until this box is the mean inversion. And after mean inversion, we have the Hadamard gate, right? So after this, all these steps, this is the initialization part. We don't have to do that. From this point all the way until this point has to be repeated over and over and over, right? This is repeated over and over so that uh, we get the correct answer. It is repeated how many times? Four times. After it is repeated four times, this part is repeated four times, then we measure. We measure all the four bits, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. So this arrow that is shown here is basically measuring the quantum state into a classical register. So from the quantum bit value, you look at what the value in the quantum bit is and store that in the classical bit so that we can read it and understand what it is so let us see how the results look like so we have implemented the circuit and now we are we executed that circuit in a quantum simulator quantum computer simulator and the results that we found are very promising so i run the simulation 10 times and out of 10 times six times i got the answer 1101 which is what we were trying to find in a normal algorithm you need to do it for 16 times or at least eight times over here i ran it for four times and four rounds and with a 60 percent probability i'm getting the answer 1101 right so this is quantum magic that is it so thank you guys uh, i hope you enjoyed the video i know this is not the best way to implement uh, grover's algorithm uh, if you find a better method to implement Grover's algorithm for any given uh, input, I mean to implement the Oracle and the uh, mean inversion function, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'll be glad to look at it and learn more from you guys. I may make a video explaining why Grover's algorithm works, what is the theory behind Grover's algorithm uh, soon, or probably I will link some good YouTube links exp explaining the same. Uh, the meantime, uh, enjoy uh, studying more about quantum computing. See you guys.